Hello fellow creatives. Let's talk about visual hierarchy. Um, what is it? It means that our eyes have been led by the designer to a certain spot in any composition. The designer gives a certain amount of visual weight to one part of the composition rather than the other. That is what visual hierarchy is and why it's important because students tend to say, I want a lot of detail, but actually what they want is clarity. And detail can detract from clarity. So you'll notice that the background is out of focus here, but what is in focus, and focus is going to be a very important word in a minute, what's in focus is the soccer ball. Our vocabulary for this section of the class, the visual hierarchy section, is this. And you will be responsible for this vocabulary. The word hierarchy suggests that one thing is more important than other things. And as we saw, the soccer ball was more important. And the secondary thing that was important in that was the kick. The kick that was coming, that potential motion was very important in this last um, image. And we talked about focal point. So a focal point comes from uh, cameras. And that means the focal point is where your eye is directed. And we'll see some more examples of this. And the word focal point comes the word focus. And so focal point is where your eye uh, lands. Sometimes, and oftentimes, as we've seen in two images so far, it's what's in focus. Everything else is kind of blurry. Focal point. Well, here's another focal point. Which, what do you think the focal point is here? The focal point is created by contrast. Now, contrast can mean a lot of different things. But the main thing is, is without contrast, there's nothing interesting happening. So here we have several kinds of contrast. We have the black and white and black and white and black and white of the zebra stripe. But all of a sudden we have this focal point and we push right into the eye because the eye has color. So this is contrasting the achromatic of the zebra with the chromatic of the eye. So notice the, um, the balance in, in this photograph because we're going to get to another thing about that too. So the eye is not in the dead center of the composition, is it? Do you like that? Do you think it should be in the middle? So contrast, like I said, makes a strong difference. You can contrast a lot of things, but the main thing is, is that contrast is what designers do. It's a verb. Designers move things around. They put those sliders. They choose you know um, resource materials to put together you can contrast a lot of things size you can contrast um, textures you can contrast good and bad good and evil you can contrast colors here's seeing the visual contrast of colors darks and lights and the sizes of the boots but notice you can also contrast the color of the boots so contrast is a very active dynamic thing that designers do. Another thing that's really important about uh, what designers do is what the user does when they are looking. We are generally drawn to text in an F motion or a Z motion. We scan a, um, a screen. So knowing where to put stuff, and in a minute we're going to know where to put stuff, uh, know that this is how the eye moves across the screen, especially when reading text. Um, or text with images in it. As we're talking about alignment or text with images and how it scans, we tend to scan across um, a line or up and down a line. So remember those scanning things and alignment, making a straight edge or a, um, a strong uh, alignment of the tops. Like when I was doing this, I made the alignment of the text and alignment of the images when I had those three images together. 
Um, we're going to get into the idea of space, not necessarily literally like this is a, a picture of space, but space is something that we manipulate in visual hierarchy. So here we are on the moon looking at our little planet, Earth. How much space is in there? The designer or the photographer put the Earth just above the center not in dead center, but just above the center, and use that empty space to orient us between the foreground and the middle ground where Earth is and the background where deep space resides. The idea of space being both positive and negative is another powerful concept that artists use and designers use. So here we have the positive earth against the, the emptiness or the negative space of space. But then you also have on this page a screen that you're looking at, this PowerPoint screen, a rectangle with the image of the earth and space moved over to the lower left there's a heading up there, and then there's me here in this little box. And so you're talking about positive and negative space. If you're looking at me and I'm moving, then your eye is probably drawn down to this corner. If I stop moving, then you might look, you might use the, the Z pattern and go zzz, 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 and you will scan this, this box of design that I've put here for you to think about. And while we're thinking about where you should put your focal point, remember the zebra's eye was off center. The zebra's eye was in something called the rule of thirds. So this is an example, and you can turn it on in your phone, um, on your, um, in your camera, in your phone, you can turn on a grid, and that grid will align with the rule of thirds. And if you put your subject off center, in any of the four um, places where the lines cross, then you will get a balanced composition. All photographers know this is one of the first things they're taught. So use your imagination to, when you point your camera at something, remember this rule of thirds to guide you for a balanced composition. Your homework, which is on Canvas, is to read visual hierarchy principles and patterns. You may also want to read about um, the psychology of scanning in visual information. And you can do that with, with this piece right here, psychology of reading. So your assignments are on Canvas and um, I hope you have fun doing them because the thing about learning is you practice what you learn. So this is your little flip classroom. This is your lecture. And so um, you've got your toes wet into visual hierarchy. You've been looking at things with visual hierarchy designed into them for most of your life. Every time you look at a computer screen, you'll see things that are designed by people the designers that went before you, and they will be using exactly the same guidelines that I'm telling you right now. And so it's handed down from one generation to another, and it's powerful. All right, I will see you in class. Bye.